After featuring well over 1,000 applications on my channel over the past nine years, I don't think it'll come as that big of a surprise when I tell you that I've also uninstalled a lot of applications in that time as well. And so it's safe to say that any application that does not get uninstalled, well, it must be pretty good, right? And so welcome to 20 Android apps that I cannot live without. And just to clarify, I know I made similar videos last year and the year before that, but this list is filled with 20 completely unique applications not featured in either of those videos. So with that being said, let's dive in. All right, kicking things off with customization related apps. And first up, we have Dual Wallpaper. And this is one of the first apps that gets installed on pretty much every phone that I use. And that's because it lets me set up two different wallpapers that will switch automatically whenever the system theme changes, meaning I can have a beautifully vibrant and bright wallpaper in the day and then a darker one that doesn't blind me at night. And there used to be way more apps that offered similar functionality, but in my testing, dual wallpaper is just about the only one that works reliably with Android 14. And then as for where I'm actually getting my wallpapers these days, well, that would be from my very own application that just recently launched, Lumina Walls. Now, as someone who reviews a lot of phones, I like to keep each review looking fresh by using different and unique wallpapers. And up until just recently, I was either using wallpapers from the various packs available to purchase on my website or from random wallpaper apps available on the Play Store. Well, now I've got my very own app that has thousands of walls available, and it's also got, in my humble opinion at least, the best design and fluidity of any wallpaper app to go with as well. And then as for which icon pack I'm using, and trust me, I didn't intend to blast you with self-promotion right from the get-go here, but I genuinely use my very own Drops icon pack for every phone I use these days. This is an updated version of an old discontinued icon pack that I used to love using a few years back, but this new and improved version has over 1300 icons supported at the time of making this video, and all of the icons are beautifully tiny with soft pastel colorways, and it's a look that I am seriously obsessed with. All right, moving into some apps that I'm gonna categorize as mod-related apps. And first up, we have Launch Air 14, but this isn't just any version of Launch Air 14. This is a modded version that actually replaces the stock system launcher. Without going into too much detail, if you've got a phone with root access unlocked like my Pixel 8 Pro is, then you can actually install this modded version of Launch Air using the Magisk Manager app. And in doing so, it'll actually replace the Pixel Launcher to become the stock launcher itself. And this means it gains full access to the gestural navigation system. And that means I can customize my Pixel phone as much as I like, whilst also retaining all of those beautiful app opening and closing animations at the same time. This app is a serious must-have install for any Pixel phones that I'm using long-term. Then we have a very, very subtle little mod called Wi-Fi QS. This one does not require root access, but again, anytime I'm using a Pixel phone, I almost immediately find myself installing this app so that I can place this dedicated Wi-Fi toggle into my quick settings menu. That means I can do away with Google's silly internet tile implementation and just have a simple Wi-Fi toggle that I can use to turn my Wi-Fi on and off just by tapping it. I mean, that's how it should work, right? And then another mod that I've become obsessed with using on my rooted Pixel 8 Pro is actually just a tiny feature found within the Pixel Expert module. This app actually allows for a huge range of customizations, but I use absolutely none of them, except for this brightness leveled flashlight tile option. And enabling this lets me add an amazing slidable flashlight toggle to my quick settings menu. And Google, if you're watching this video, this should be the default flashlight toggle implementation in future Android releases. It is that damn good. And then for any other mod related application that I use these days, if they don't require root access, then it's a very safe bet that they most likely use Shizuku instead. This is an app that basically acts as a middleman for any app that requires ADB permissions to be granted in that you essentially grant it ADB permissions. And then from that point onwards, any supported apps that you use in the future that also require ADB permissions, you can grant them right from your phone using Shizuku instead. And as you can see, I've actually got six apps on my Pixel 8 Pro here that all use Shizuku for at least one bit of functionality. So yeah, as you can see, it's definitely an app that I cannot live without. 
All right, from there, let's move into a bunch of tool-based applications. And first cab off the rank is Buzzkill. And this is an app that I actually first featured on the channel several years ago now. And then I didn't use it for a while, but at the start of this year, I actually found myself starting to use it on pretty much every single phone that I own. In short, Buzzkill is an app that allows you to customize how your phone handles notifications. But for me, I essentially use it on any main phone I'm using these days to mute all of the person C notifications sent to me from my two Google Nest cameras during work hours. And then I also install it on all of my older phones now to basically just mute every single notification that comes in so they don't keep getting doubled up. Then we have Local Send, an app that I only just featured on the channel last month, but one that I'm now using nearly every single day. To put it simply, this is basically like a better, more universal version of QuickShare and AirDrop combined. And then it works on literally any device, yes, Mac and iPhones included, and it's just as fast and arguably more reliable for sharing files between devices that are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. And then Tap Scroll is one of those apps that I install and set up almost immediately anytime I get a new phone, and then it just lives in the background serving one purpose beautifully. You see, anytime I've been scrolling through a long page within any given app and I find myself wanting to quickly scroll back to the top, well, with tap scroll activated, I'm able to just tap my status bar and just like that, the page scrolls up automatically. And I know iPhones do this natively, but it's because I love that feature so much that I find myself absolutely needing to install it so I can use it on my various Android phones as well. And another app in a similar vein, in that I just install it as soon as I set up a new phone and then let it do its thing in the background, is Bluetooth Volume Manager. I mean, you don't know how useful this app is until you start using it. Essentially, for the longest time, whenever I would hop into my car, as soon as my phone's Bluetooth connected, it would automatically start playing whatever I was last listening to, usually a podcast, but because my phone's volume was often set so low, I'd miss like 20 seconds of the podcast before realizing what was going on. Well, with this app, I just add any of my saved Bluetooth devices to this list, then adjust the volume sliders as needed, and that's it. Now, whenever I connect to my car, my phone's volume sliders go all the way up automatically, meaning I no longer miss anything. And speaking of audio, just wanted to take a quick moment to talk about some amazing speakers that I've been using for the past couple of months, which are actually from the sponsor of this video, Kef. Now, if you've heard of the brand Kef before, then you'll probably be aware that they make some of the world's most premium and well-built speakers, but their latest offering, the LSX2 LTs, whilst they're still not what many would consider outrageously cheap, they are a much more accessible set of speakers. And yet, despite their more affordable price tag, they still utilize Kef's impressive UniQ driver array technology, which places the tweeter precisely at the acoustic center of the bass and mid-range cone, which allows the speakers to disperse sound evenly throughout any room, therefore eliminating that singular sweet spot issue that impacts most other speakers on the market. Plus, the sound quality that they produce is on another level. As mentioned, I've been using them at my editing desk setup for the past two months, and they sound incredible. Here, have a listen. I know sometimes life can be tough. And you feel like you just had enough. To learn more about them or to pick up a pair for yourself, use the first link down in the description below. All right, continuing with our tool-based apps, and Batarang is another app that I've been using for the past few months to keep a track of battery life on some of the secondary smartphone devices I use here in the studio. So I use both a Galaxy Z Fold 3 and one of my nothing phones, usually the Phone 2, although more recently the Phone 2A, for filming a bunch of videos. And before I discovered Batarang, I would often go to start using them only to find out that they had run out of charge and were now dead. Well, with Batarang set up on each device, I now get a notification on my main device of choice, letting me know when they're low on battery, so I remember to go and charge them, and I also get notified when they're fully charged as well, so I don't accidentally overcharge them. After that is a newer, and this is an app that has gotten so many shout outs on the channel over the past year that I've actually now lost count, but that's just because I genuinely use it so often. It's essentially a really powerful open source app manager and analyzer application. And what's really great is that every single update keeps adding all of these amazing new features in. 
but I tend to find myself using it for opening text files, completing batch actions related to the apps installed on my phone, plus I often just open the app to marvel at how fluid it is. In fact, I actually used it for inspiration when creating Lumina Walls to try and emulate its level of fluidity, and I think we got fairly close. And then finally, for the tool section, we have Obtainium. And as you may have guessed, I have a lot of apps installed on my phone, many featured in this video for that matter, that are not downloaded from the Google Play Store. And so Obtainium is the app that I use to keep a track of as many of them as I can so that I can be notified whenever they release new updates. And being able to track all of them in the one app is so, so handy. Okay, three quarters through the list now, and next up we have some camera and video based apps. And these days, whenever I'm using a phone that is not a Google Pixel phone, a Samsung phone, or an iPhone, then one app I absolutely must install is the Gcam port. Now, there are actually many, many different versions of this app available, and usually you want to find a version that's been specifically ported over for your device of choice, but it essentially takes the best parts of the Google Camera app that ships with Google Pixel phones, i.e. the processing, and makes it work on any non-Google Pixel phone. For me, it is pretty much the number one app that makes shooting photos with nothing phones a somewhat tolerable experience. The only issue is that it can sometimes be really tough to find a version that supports all of the lenses. Then there's One Second Every Day, and this is an app that I featured on the channel towards the start of this year, and for a little while there, I didn't think that I'd keep using it, but lo and behold, I actually now use it literally every day. The idea is that you capture a one second video every single day and then collate all of your clips within the app, with the ultimate end goal being to essentially build a mini movie of sorts documenting every single day in any given length of time. And as you can see, I've now captured over 100 of these one second videos and I don't really have any plans on stopping anytime soon. All right, to wrap up the video, I have four more apps to showcase, each of which fall under separate categories. So we're bundling them all together in a section called miscellaneous. And first on this list is an app I use all the time called Beeper. In fact, I actually think out of every single app on this list, this is the one that I use the most because it's essentially replaced both the Google Messages app and WhatsApp. There's just something so nice about the interface and the fact that I have just one app now to manage the various message conversations in my life is seriously so convenient. Then we have Book Marie, and I'll admit my reading has taken a bit of a nosedive in the past couple of months, but I do plan to get back into it and this is the app I use to track every book I've read so far. I actually really dig the design and interface and it's got some neat animations across the UI too. But I will say, I kind of wish it didn't take so long to load whenever it first opens and I wish there was support for cross device syncing rather than the manual backup feature it currently uses. I've actually also been using the ChatGPT app a bunch lately thanks to its incredible voice chat functionality and usually I'll use it when I'm scripting videos and I'm trying to remember a popular phrase or euphemism and I'll just open up the app, tap the chat icon and then start blabbing usually in a very nonsensical way and somehow it's always able to give me the exact phrase that I'm after. I also obviously use it for other purposes too but that chat functionality is on another level. And then finally today we have the shop app and I actually do not use this app at all for buying products, but I do use it for tracking deliveries because every single product that I buy gets automatically detected and added to the app. And so instead of having to dig through emails, trying to find tracking information and so forth, now I just open up the app, tap this orders icon and that's it. But there you have it, 20 Android apps that get installed pretty much straight away on nearly every single Android phone that I use. If you enjoyed the video, then a sub would be greatly appreciated. But aside from that, thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you later.